Janitorial Manager presents the Business of Cleaning podcast, the podcast that brings you the information you need to be successful in the cleaning industry. The Business of Cleaning podcast provides in-depth interviews with successful personalities from the commercial cleaning industry, as well as discussing the trending topics that matter to you and your organization. Welcome to the Business of Cleaning podcast, your number one source of information on the commercial cleaning industry. We release new episodes monthly live from the janitorial manager studio located in Toledo, Ohio. I'm Tim Clagg, the marketing communication specialist here at AA Solutions and your host of the Business of Cleaning podcast. This month, we're talking with MJ Merja, the manager of business development for GDI Services. MJ has worked with GDI for the last eight years. We're glad to have you on this month's episode. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. So let's start at the beginning. So what kind of started and piqued your interest in business, in sales? When did that start for you? Wow. I think always growing up, I've, you know, being in high school and picking up that part-time job, it's always been at, at the mall and doing sales there as an associate and you know, things flourished. I ended up moving over to um, Caesars Windsor, dealt with um, kind of the big fish there and marketing and sales and bringing in new people. So I had the opportunity with GDI, it opened up and um, I've been there ever since. Can you describe to the audience your role, uh, manager of business development, the responsibilities that you have that comes along with your uh, job? I think our main role in sales um, is growth for the company and establishing the relationships with clients and ensuring that it's long term and we meet all this all the needs and services that we sell to the client. You mentioned the word long term. Well, long term GDI has a long term 97 years in the commercial cleaning industry. And I'm just fascinated from the beginning back in 1926, originally established for janitorial services in Quebec. And today now you guys are the premier company with over 30,000 employees, 48 acquisitions since 2008. What has led to kind of that that hotbed, that growth uh, from the company from 2008 and all the way up until 2023? I think it's, we we are a $2.5 billion company. And in order to be structured in a way, you'd have to acquire new companies so you can almost be on a national point and uh, be at a local touch as well. Um, we cover pretty much all of Canada and we also are in the U.S., so by acquiring other companies, it just gives us um, more opportunities for different states and cities, and we can cater to a lot more clients that way. With competition and competitors right now at an all-time high, especially in this industry that has kind of boomed the last really three to five years, um, what does GDI do to continue to adapt, grow, and meet the needs of your customers? I, you're right on that. There's a lot more competition than when I first started off and it's amazing to see and it's great um, for the industry. I think it's important to develop the relationships, which GDI does and the long expertise and the many years that we've we've been in the industry and understanding what growth needed to be made and now offering um various types of services in the industry, such as the chemical solution side, the mechanical and technical portion. Um, it's really helped us grow and understanding what the client does need in the end, really listening to what the client needs and being flexible and bringing the innovation that may help the industry. Over 18 different services that you guys provide. I mean, it is a healthy list. What do you think? Very that- <laughs> what do you think that you would attribute uh, the competition, the growth overall in the industry? Obviously, huge demand during you know 2020 when the world was kind of flipped upside down. But where do you think that you hear from your customers that has been responsible besides, you know, obviously high demand? You know, GDI is a national company, but we we operate as a local company, which really does help um us in the industry and being, you know, very close to our clients, I'd say, you know, when it comes to distance 
it's wise and time wise, it's an hour. We're pretty much an hour away from majority of our customers. So we can provide that, that service that's up close and kind of personal and really listening and understanding what the client's needs are. Um, I think it's quite important. It's not just here's, here's the services and, you know, here's our mop and bucket, our frontline staff, and we're good to go. It's really understanding the needs and the pain points of the client, you know, and ensuring that they're focused in their business, whether it's, you know, producing, manufacturing, customer satisfaction with their tenants, occupants, whatever the case may be, and and doing what we do best, and it's the janitorial services on, on our end or mechanical, technical you know, the, the chemical solutions and yeah. And the phrase that kept appearing, kept popping up when gathering information, doing research on GDI was the phrase that kept coming up. They pride themselves on customer centric approach. So having that reputation, obviously key when you've been around for for 97 years to uphold those standards and be able to deliver uh time and time again to your customers? I think it's, you know, building that long-term relationship with these clients really is beneficial. You know, these some of our clients are based in Canada and the U.S. and being able to provide the same service in Canada and into the U.S. is helpful. But um, once again, I'll go back to that local touch and really knowing the client because I always find in sales, if, if the client doesn't like you, they're not going to, they're not going to buy anything from yep. you, you know, so it's important to really listen and building a customized solution for the client in order for it to be successful. And you know what? We deal with a lot of frontline staff and we're all people at the end of the day and, you know, learning from any mistakes that we do make and improving on that is, you know, beneficial on its own. And I always talk to people. I personally believe that it is a true art of sales in business. And really things have changed uh, for you and the approach and everybody in the landscape for the last three and a half years. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you guys have seen in that time frame, the last three years of how you deal with handling um, sales? Oh, that's a great question. And it has been challenging for sure. Um, you know, I'm, really big on meeting the client face to face mm -hmm. and getting to know them. But, you know, as we all know, it's been difficult and a lot of people work from home and, you know, coinciding your schedules with their schedules, you know, zoom, great example, like, you know, getting on into a zoom meeting or a team's meeting, whatever the case may be. So at least you can, you can have that face to name recognition. So I think that's, that's helpful in its own. Um, you know, uh, phone calls and emails. I think everybody's so busy in their schedules. And with that hybrid working model, people are overly busy, you know, trying to do the balance of a work home. I find that even working from home, you tend to work a lot more than you would yeah. stay at the office. So, so um, being able to put a face and name is very important when it comes to sales. And I try my best in order to meet that need and, whether it be scheduling a lunch or just as simple as a Zoom meeting. Um, yeah, it, that's that's all you can really do. I find that being having that phone call kind of sales thing doesn't work anymore. It does not. People are too busy for it. So also, too, does that change your approach? Because uh, you schedule, you know, there's a typical time frame. Let's say, you know, if you were in person, maybe you'd have an hour to uh, talk with somebody face to face where a lot of teams meeting, sometimes you may only have 30 minutes. Does that change or has that changed kind of your approach, your team's approach when trying to establish that connection uh, point, get the pain points from your customer and hear their needs? I, I, I guess it would help with kind of understanding what doing social media, looking up who the client is, understanding what they like, whether there's interests or hobbies, whether they're a, a part of a chamber of commerce or, you know, they play a golfing league. That's something that you have to kind of look at. So then you can arrange your schedule, be a part of that com commerce right. or chamber of commerce, do the golf, 
and meeting them that way, I think um, that's helped me quite a bit. And just being a part of that, any networking type of conference or um, events that other companies may have, conventions, you just have to be a part of, you have to be out there in order to, to meet that one client that, you know, you're looking to get a hold of. And taking the time. I think to that would do, be the change. Yeah. Right. And taking the time to do that research, to find what somebody is interested in, that goes a long way because it shows that you, you care about what they're interested in and who doesn't like to talk about themselves a little bit, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, that's, that's why I always say like, make sure we're, we're, we're part of a generation that, now that is based on social media so you can find a lot about a person just by looking up social media or linkedin Mm -hmm. you know reposting stories of of what they found interesting and and having um a conversation just based on that and that's one thing i'm finding out i'm still fairly new to the community in the industry and i'll tell you i've been so impressed with just honestly how a tight niche group they truly are and, and supporting one another in the cause to uh, support and, and share each other's growth and accomplishments, which that's kind of astounding me because sometimes in other industries, that's not always the case. Yeah. And you know what, uh, knowing as many people as you can just to get out there and hoping that there's going to be a referral in that type of industry or in the same industry or outside of the industry, knowing someone will probably get you in the right path of getting to know that one person that you want to get um, to know. So I think, I think for myself, it it hasn't really been an issue, but um, I am kind of social and it it does help in sales. So so, absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned something that I kind of want to talk about here a little bit more sales and marketing. They work closely together. What advice can you give listeners to leverage on digital marketing, their online presence that may help them and their company to lead to more sales, especially if it's somebody trying to, in the commercial clean industry, look to lock down a a contract. Listening to the client. I think really listening to the client and understanding what the needs are instead of, I find that we're selling in general, selling before we actually know what the client really needs. So listening to what um, some of the pain points are and really customizing a solution fit for them. Um, And then bringing that information back to marketing. You'll see a trend of what some of the issues are, the pain points of the client, bringing it back to marketing where they can do their job and put it on the the social platforms and um, speaking to those pain points a little bit more. A strong presence can go a long way, especially with a company in the commercial cleaning industry having to do their own independent research. So if you guys share that data and put it out there, your clients are going to see that. They're going to retain that and then try and make those changes uh, with with their company. Uh, But what you mentioned something too, pain points. Um, As we enter the Q4 of 2023, hard to believe it's already here. Um, But what are some of the things from your clients that you're listening to, you're hearing uh, that might have popped up on the radar here as far as pain points uh, that are being brought to your attention? Flexibility. I think like a lot of clients are looking for a flexible partner, Um, somebody that can adapt to their environment. For instance, let's take the, the office market commercial office market, um, they're working at a hybrid model. So they don't need, they need a scope that's adjusted for now their new, their new future. They're, that's their, everybody's livelihood now. They work from home and the office. So it's something that, you know, bringing that solution to the client because we we see that, you know, the scopes that the client does provide has been a scope that has been around since they've occupied that space. So it's, it's going back to the client and saying, Hey, you know what, you know, instead of doing it this way, we find that there's more traffic on these days and then adjusting the scope um, to their needs. I keep on saying that their needs, but it is their needs. It's it's building that that solution customized for them. 
And kind of that's something that's interesting that you just brought up the hybrid model. And that's uh, something I've kind of started to see here in the last uh, handful of months is uh, companies, uh, commercial cleaning companies, maybe focusing on going to a that four day work week. Okay, this is when this is, we're the busiest. This is when our, our customer and the contract, their busy days are. They're getting the heaviest traffic where they're going to need more attention for us and our staff to come in and complete the tasks that we need to do. Is that something you think might catch on more here and as we get ready to head into 2024? Oh, it's already been here. I, I think that um, a lot of companies do work on the hybrid model and We've all, I think, all the all the competition, including um, whether it be, you know, mechanical, technical side, um, janitorial, we've all had to be flexible and adapt to what the client's work schedules are. It's a new norm, I'd mm-hmm. say. Things aren't always going to go according to plan. How do you handle customer complaints, feedback, what guidance and points can you give listeners when these situations do pop up? Because they, they certainly will. Listen, <laughs> don't get defensive. <laughs> right. I, I feel that when we're dealing with people, we're not dealing with robots. So there's always going to be, it's not perfect. Um, this world is not perfect. So listening to what they have to say and coming up with an action plan and being Um, proactive I think is not reactive I find that you know sometimes we could if we don't hear anything from a client things are going well well that's not necessarily true yeah Um, so being being in communications and contact with the client ensuring that you know you take care of the problem prior to it actually happening Um, you have to be close with them close with your staff um, being that support system for them, ensuring that all the sub, all the service levels are going to be met. So being proactive and listening instead of reactive. And especially too, people hear the problem. They start, the wheels start spinning, right? We're a society where some people, a lot of people actually are trying to prepare their move, right? Instead of being an active listener, uh, what are some strategies, you know, that you work with with your team to try and improve that that listening skill overall? Because I know as a married man of five years plus, I'm still always trying to improve my listening skills. I said just frequent um, meetings to sit down and, you know, ensuring that all the services are being met is extremely helpful. So having those KPI meetings, um, the items of topic that are important to the client, ensuring that, you know, we're tracking those items and having a quarterly meeting, monthly meeting, whatever the clients um, are looking for and sit down and communicate even the hard topics, like the hard conversations and, and really, um, kind of attacking the pain points and ensuring that you're moving forward in a positive way. Really understanding what's going on. Like whether it's even software, like the software of holding yourself accountable with, with the assistance of software, ensuring that tasks are being complete. We're talking with MJ Merja. MJ is the manager of business development for GDI services in You had mentioned a little bit ago, we had mentioned the hybrid model, the different look that is the office environment now. Um, It's changing. It's going to continue to change. Uh, Obviously, so many businesses uh, hit hard by the pandemic. Matter of fact, some places starting to have some reissue mask mandates. How will this continue to impact your clients, the industry? And this time, if it does happen again, we think that there will be a more of a seamless transition if that is the case. Well, you'd hope so. Um, I'd hope so, just because we've already been here before. So, you know, learning from what had happened initially when it first started and taking some notes then and providing some of the solutions now, I believe that we can be ahead of the game and ensuring that it is a seamless transition by um, learning from 
what had been prior. So just being ahead of ahead of the game by, you know, whether it be services or um, the infectious touch points, ensuring that you're constantly doing those services and meeting those those important um, tasks that I think, you know, it should we shouldn't be affected by it as much. One thing you just touched on that I kind of want to dive a little bit further into is software in the industry. It is um, a more common thing. And what would that do for your clients um, and customers to better streamline their organization? What would be the ben- the biggest benefits uh, based on the pain points that you, you've heard? I know you mentioned organization, uh, but what other things would they benefit from? Transparency. I think it just shows a level of transparency with um, the softwares that are out there. Accountability. Um, uh, for instance, you know, having our employees check off tasks when they're completed. How long did it actually take them? Um, where are they in the building? Did they just check in and then you can find them for the rest of the shift? So it's really showing the client a level of trust um, with the company and ensuring that, you know, the transparency and honesty is there. And it's extremely important because I think the clients these days are just like, what they want to know what they're paying for and with providing reports and showing exactly what topics they're, they're interested in and we can show it in black and white that, you know, it's, it's positive feedback. Then you have that documentation too, to collaborate with uh, that customer, that employee and kind of build that trust, that, that relationship, and and continue to grow there. Uh, I I think something that ties hand in hand, you and I kind of talked about it in our initial conversation was the growth and it's here. It's already continuing to grow. Um, I use chat GPT every day, now a $90 billion uh, tool that's out there, but the focus and growth of AI that could take the industry by storm and really is taking the industry by storm here in the future. It's extremely important. Um, it, it doesn't even just help the client. It helps us as a vendor um, with specific characteristics that these software developers are making. Mm-hmm. It's actually astounding to provide photo feedback and you know open work orders and inventory levels that the the current supply is at. It's it's astounding actually, and it's extremely beneficial for both client and vendor. And uh, you know what, and it keeps on developing as you keep on saying something always new is coming up. You know, I have some of the software developers call me and said, Hey, you know, we're rolling out so-and-so geofencing. It's going to be active within a short time frame, And it's it, honestly, it's a, it, I, I get blown away each time. GDI approaching 100 years. So the growth has been exponential. Um, Where do you guys see, where are you focusing here in the future for your company uh, as you continue to expand and seek new opportunities for the future? (laughs) That's a good question. I think just providing that level of service that we've always been providing for a hundred years and having those relationships within the industry and, you know, moving towards providing more services to the client, understanding what their needs are, um, anywhere from janitorial to the mechanical technical side. Everything is now moving towards a digital type of system, like the clouds and, and <laughs> you know, building more of a service catering to that. You know, the innovation is here and we need to keep up with it, ensuring, you know, we're looking at our competitors and, and what they're doing and, and getting that feedback and, you know, growing along the lines of that. And with that too, obviously there's going to be some people might be concerned or a little bit apprehensive. What have you heard as far as, okay, well, maybe my, my concern with going that route here is security. Uh, you know, that's always a big issue. Is that something that you've uh, gotten any feedback or heard from, from any of your customers? Um, no, not as of yet. I think every, it's always been kind of more of a positive feedback. I think clients are excited to to see that transparency, understanding exactly what is going on and exactly what um, they're, par- they're paying for. So I've 
so far, I haven't heard any of the um, issues with security as of yet, but um, I believe with the softwares that are out right now that, you know, I think they're ahead of the game when it comes to security, ensuring that everything is is up to par on that end. I want to transition real quick back to uh, some sales things. Kind of want to uh, get some knowledge from you as we kind of go back to the training aspect. How is it and what is it a great way to stay up to date for you guys with new techniques, always trying to improve, right? That's what we're all trying to do, whether it's in in our, our jobs or our own lives outside of work. What are some things that you found some new techniques or um, that can help in 2023 and, and pay off for you guys to continue to meet the needs and continue to approve, improve the approach? That's a good question. I think really um, ensuring that we are looking at our competitors and seeing what their service offerings are and taking it back to the team here and seeing how we can build from that and grow from that um, training when it comes to even our frontline staff. I believe it's very important to ensure that, you know, they're with the times when it comes to even robotics or, you know, the, the different apps that they have on their mobile devices and, you know, ensuring that there's a comfort there. I feel that it, the more you train, whether it be an executive level to the frontline level, the more people train and understand, um, whether it be a new software or a piece of equipment, the more comfort there is and the better the service becomes. Tremendous feedback and I do appreciate you. I know it's been a busy week for you uh, enjoying some vacation. We don't want to take up too much of your time. MJ, I do appreciate you coming by the show here, sharing your experience in sales, giving us a look inside of GDI and how can, pos how can possible customers or anybody looking for more information about the company, about your services, where can they find that information? Online, <laughs> just like just like we find everything else. Um, Take a visit to www.gdi.com and uh, you'll find everything you need there. If not, there's some contact information um, and you can speak to one of our representatives. That will complete this month's edition of the Business of Cleaning Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and now on iHeartMedia and wherever you get your podcasts from. Also, be sure to leave us a five-star review and leave your comments. From everyone at Janitorial Manager, my guest this month, MJ Merja. I'm Tim Clagg saying so long until next time.